Good evening, boys and girls. Tonight's lesson is lesson 12.5, line plots. Our essential question is, how can you make and interpret line plots with fractional data? Please turn in your GoMath book to lesson 12.5, and we'll begin. Now, a line plot is a graph that shows the frequency of data along a number line. Here's my number line. Here's my title, called Stuffed Animals. Now the label on the bottom tells us the number of stuffed animals. That means that it goes from zero to five. Now the data is going to be the X's, and each X is going to represent each student. So if I look right here, I can see this many students have zero stuffed animals. One, two, three, four, five, six kids in the class have only one stuffed animal. But nobody in the class has two stuffed animals only. And you can see that three students have three stuffed animals, two students have four, and one student has five stuffed animals. So now let's read our question. It says Sarah counted how many stuffed animals each student has. How many students have three or more stuffed animals? So looking at my line plot, I'm going to pay attention to the number three on the line plot, but I also have to look at four and five because a question says, how many students have three or more stuffed animals? So as I count up my line plot, I can see I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six students have three or more stuffed animals. And that's how you read a line plot. So in your Go Math book on lesson 12.5, you're going to have this question. Let's do it together. Here's an example of how you would take a survey to create a line plot. So if you look right over here, this is an example of a survey. These are the different times that students were surveyed about how long they spent on a school bus in hours. So when you take your survey, you can record your data in a tally chart. So if you look at this survey of time spent on a school bus in hours, different kids were asked randomly, and their answers were 1, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 1, 6, 3, 6, and 3, 6. I don't like it when it's not in order from least to greatest, so I took the time to put them in order from least to greatest, so that way it's easier for me to record it on my tally chart. So I have two students that rode the bus for one sixth of an hour. And if you think about time, if it's cut into 60 minutes, one sixth of 60 minutes equals 10 sixtieths. So that would actually equal 10 minutes. So anyways, I just thought I would explain that to you so that way you would be aware of the exact time that they actually spent was really 10 minutes, but it's also called one sixth of an hour. I'm going to check those off that I just recorded them on my tally table. Next, I have one student that rode the bus for two sixths of an hour, also known as 20 minutes. I have one, two, three, four students that rode the bus for three sixths of an hour, also called one half of an hour, because we can simplify three sixths. And last but not least, only one child rode the bus for four sixths of an hour, also known as 40 minutes. And now that we have a tally chart, it'll be easy to make our X's for our data for our line plot. So as I count up, I have two students for one six, so I'm going to just darken those in. One student rode the bus for two sixths of an hour. Four students rode the bus for three sixths of an hour. And one student rode the bus for four sixths of an hour. And now I can answer the questions down below. Question number two says, how many students compared times? Well, that's just asking how many students were surveyed. If you count up your tallies, and if you count up your X's on your line plot, and if you count up your survey table, you can see that we had eight students surveyed. So I'm going to make the number eight right there. Number three says, what is the difference between the longest time and the shortest time students spent riding the bus? Well, boys and girls, difference means you subtract. So we can say the largest amount of time that this person right here rode the bus was four-sixths of an hour. The shortest amount of time that a student rode the bus was one-sixth of an hour. So I'm going to just subtract four-sixths 
minus 1 6. And when we add and subtract fractions, you always keep your denominator the same, and you just subtract the numerator. So the difference between the longest time and the shortest time students spent riding the bus was 3 6 of an hour, also known as a half of an hour difference. Let's move on. Now for the next question, number four, the problem solving question says, the milk drunk at lunch in quarts. Now your survey looks like this, and you have this information for your data, and you also have a line plot down here below, and it's titled milk drunk in, at lunch in quarts. However, you don't have a tally table, and sometimes it's easier if you make a tally table before you actually fill in your line plot. So I'm going to go ahead and make a tally table just to model for you, and you just watch my tally table, and then we'll fill in the line plot together. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my, my data in order from least to greatest. So here's my information in order from least to greatest. Now I can see that I have two students who drank one-eighth of a quart of milk. So I'm going to make two tallies for one-eighth of a quart. I have one, two, three, four students that drank two-eighths of a quart of milk. So I'm going to put tallies for two-eighths. One, two, three, four. I have only two students that drink three-eighths of a quart and two students who drink four-eighths of a quart, also known as one-half of a quart. So now I can take this information according to my survey in order from least to greatest and my tally chart and I can now turn it into a line plot. So I'm going to look and I have right here, I have two students that drank one-eighth of a quart so I can just make two X's to represent those two students. Now I have four students that drank two-eighths, also known as one-fourth of a quart, so I'm going to make four X's to represent those four students who drank two-eighths of a quart of milk for lunch. On my tally chart I have two students that drank three-eighths of a quart, so I'm going to make two X's to represent those two students. And last but not least, I have two students that drank four eighths, also known as a half of quart of milk. And that's how we can construct this line plot. And then looking at this line plot, you can answer many questions. For example, how many students were surveyed? Well, I can count up my X's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten students were surveyed. That also matches the data in my survey here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I can also answer the, the question, what's the difference between the milk that was drank at lunch? You could say, well, the difference would be 4 eighths minus 1 eighths. The difference would be 3 eighths from the largest to the smallest amount. So there's many different questions you can answer from a line plot. So here we go, let's try some more. Okay, for this next problem solving question, I want you to take the time to make a tally table and a line plot for the data given right here. I want you to put it in order from least to greatest, fill in a tally table, and I went ahead and made one for you that you can copy, and then you can fill in your line plot that is there inside of your Go Math book. So find a nice spot in your Go Math book off to the side where you can actually create your own tally table, and then we will check together and see if we match. Go ahead and press pause now. Okay, so as you can see, I put my fractional data in order from least to greatest to make it easier to make my tally chart. And what I did was I put down that I had only one distance was one-tenth of, of a distance between stops, so I made one tally. Notice how there were no two-tenths in my data. So therefore, I still had to create it because we are making a number line, and number lines go from least to greatest. You never skip. So I will just leave that blank. For three-tenths, I have two pieces of data, and as you can see, it all matches over here. So I made two X's on my line plot. And number four-tenths, I had three pieces of data, and up here it does match up as well. So therefore, I made three X's for my four-tenths of a mile, that's distance between my stops, and last but not least, I have two that were five-tenths of a mile difference, also simplified to a half of a mile. 
between the mail carrier stops. Therefore, I have two for that. So this is what your line plot should look like. Now, again, this way you can answer many different questions. For example, what are the difference, um, what's the difference between the farthest distance and the shortest distance? You can use the five tenths, which is a half a mile, minus one tenth. The difference would be four tenths of a mile. Do you see how line plots you can answer a lot of different questions from? Okay, so anyways, I hope you did well on that one, and I hope yours matched mine as well. So here are your two homework questions about line plots. Number one and number two, you're going to only look at this line plot right here according to the questions. Um, number one says how many students were reading during study time. Okay, remember what the data would be, how many students were reading. Number two, what's the difference between the longest time and shortest time spent reading? And remember, our title of our line plot is time spent reading during study times. So answer those two questions, which you should easily do because we just talked about line plots. And then I want you to answer the rest of the questions on page 230 in your Go Math book, questions 3 through 6. And then, of course, you know me, I want you to assess yourself to see how you feel about line plots. How do you feel about reading a line plot? How do you feel about making a line plot? If you feel like you're a novice, please put one on your Go Math book, two for apprentice, three for practitioner, or four for being the expert. You really understand line plots. Again, here are your math questions. Take your time on them, read them carefully, and we will check them tomorrow in class, and we will practice more with line plots. Have a great night. Bye-bye.